Hello my wonderful viewers and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Overanalyzes. Today we're going to take a fully spoilery look at chapter 19 of Doron Dororon. This was a fun chapter. This was a silly chapter. This was a chapter that raised a few questions. As usual, there will be a short spoiler free section, about two minutes long. Then I will get into the spoilers. So now for the spoiler free section. This chapter was clearly written to go one of two ways. As, as some of you may know, the series is kind of struggling. It's not a bad series. I think it's a really good series, and I think it will eventually take off. But there are a lot of good series on Shonen Jump right now, and this one's kind of just barely hanging in there. Hopefully, the last few chapters will bump up its popularity, and it'll stick around. But you can tell that if need be, this was meant to work as a final chapter, at least in the first half. In the second half, it gets onto world building and reaching out to further chapters. So I think halfway through this chapter, they got the word that they weren't getting cut. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm really happy. Now, this chapter does illustrate a few of the creator's signature I don't even know if it's a writing style or tropes he chooses to use, but there's some things about this that is kind of beginning to make the feel and make this is having this establish its own place. The first thing is just how petty the heroes are from the top ranked samurai who's out there knocking Mononoke left and right to the main hero himself to the main hero's current uh, rival, or the one who claims to be his rival, to the vast majority of the samurai working for the Isanagi Corps. These are people. These are young people. They want attention. They're fascinated by novelty. They're fair weather friends. They are buying favor and attention. And really, the only pure hearted sh classic shonen character that we have in here. But possibly one or two of the secondary humans are that way, but Kusanagi himself, the little Mononoke, is possibly the only true pure-hearted shonen hero we have. They're fighting, they're squabbling, they're arguing, the human characters. It is just, and it's natural to the environment, and it somehow even avoids being cheesy when they're fighting over, when they're fighting over the sweetbreads. It's, it is really... A delightful, it is a delightful, funny, engaging, and very realistic dynamic that I, for one, really enjoy. We also get some looks at some characters' habits that are being repeated again, and I think are going to come and tie back into major character arcs. I'll get into more of that in the full spoiler, but we get a few hints dropped here and there about certain characters and certain behaviors that don't really stick out until you see them repeated over and over again. Finally, we get the parts that tie forward into the upcoming chapters. The main thing is, of course, well, that'll be, all be in the spoilers. There's uh, some dark threads here that connect to just how immature and human and flawed everybody is, but in a darker way. So, we will be looking forward to that. To seeing where that develops. All right, that's it for the spoiler free review. Everybody is petty and amusing and bickering, squabbling children. We're and let's move on. So you have been warned there will be spoilers while you click while you so you have time to click away. I will tell I will give you time by telling you to go check out the links below the video to get a copy of my book. Humans are weird. I have the data or humans are weird. We took a vote available on in paperback and electronically wherever books are sold for all intents and purposes. All righty. Kusanagi, our little Mononoke friend, the little Mononoke who had a human friend and lost that human friend. Now, we've had other Mononoke say that Kusanagi distinctly does not smell as if, he, as if he's eaten human flesh, therefore, Mo, therefore Kusanagi cannot understand their desire for human flesh. Now, this is uh, interesting. This suggests that there are even if they're not common, there are Mononoke who do not eat human flesh. Otherwise, how would all these other Mononoke recognize the scent? Secondly, it kind of eliminates the possibility that 
Kusanagi is directly responsible for the death of his human friend. But we do have an interesting thing that happens on page five in the middle panel. Kusanagi, in reaction to another character collapsing from injuries and exhaustion, immediately screams, Wah! We've got to get, we have to get him to the hospital! Now, this is something that shows up again and again. When the, when, in the fight by the bay in one of the earlier chapters, when Dora and Kusanagi were first getting to know each other, and those two random samurai came up and told them to get lost, this is a restricted zone, then the water Mononoke came up and attacked the two samurai. After Dora and Kusanagi rescued them, Dora runs up to the samurai and says, get, get your friend to the hospital, basically. Do you need help, or would I be in the way? And I'm pretty sure there's been another instance of this. So we're looking at a three-beat arc here. Dora, when faced... Uh, not, not Dora. Kusanagi, when faced with an injured human, his first instinct isn't just to help, to try to offer help himself, or even to go and get help, but get this person to the hospital. Now that that is something interesting. It's a very specific reaction, and not one you usually see. It's call for help, call 911. It's not usually get this person to the hospital. And that makes me think that this is going to tie back into Kusanagi's backstory. Maybe he hesitated because Kusanagi was afraid of getting in trouble. He hesitated to take his little human friend to the hospital. And that's maybe why, he, why or at least why Kusanagi thinks his little human friend died. Hard to say. Hard to say. But I really think that... There's some sort of hospital-related trauma or lack of hospital-related trauma in Kusanagi's background that we're going to get to see moving forward. And I, for one, am very interested to see that. And hopefully this is the creator tying this forward into the future and not just developing a random quirk for one of his characters. Now, we see the aftermath of the battle. Now, the, this battle with these Mononoke up in the mountains, there was a, there was a significant amount of build-up to it. I don't know that it was supposed to be this short originally, but like I said, this manga was really fighting, fighting to keep its head above the water and may not have known whether or not it was going to survive the, survive this chapter, but... I think one of the reasons it will survive is this ruthless determination to avoid plot armor for everyone but the main character, basically. Literally anyone can die, or at least any of the villains can die, including the cute feminine-coded ones, which is really, really unusual in, in most shonen manga. So, the anyone can die, the distinct immature realistic emotional dynamic between the secondary characters and even the main characters and a, a general well-written story and, and really good art style i think are, are what's going to keep this let this manga keep its head above the water now we have the other samurai responding well to kusanagi because well he's cute cute and tough, so he's useful to them, and he's cute, so he's at least made some fair-weather friends, which makes Kusanagi very, very happy. And this isn't completely out of the blue. He, there'd been rumors floating around about Kusanagi, the Mononoke that protected people before this, and they've had time to get used to on them. And, well, the, the manga does make a point. It's because he's cute. Humans are more willing to trust people or things who are visually attractive. It's just a, it's just unfortunately how we're wired. Be beautiful, handsome people, they get more trust than ugly people. Unfair, but real. And I think that's I interesting that the creator, the mangaka, specifically states, you're cute and tough. So then, then, of course, you have the petty squabbling over who gets to be his friend and among the samurai and Dora, who's still a very low-ranked samurai and doesn't have the social status to enforce his claim on Kusanagi. And then, of course, just Kusanagi being the pure sweetheart that he is. Then you have just the petty bickering for status and recognition among the samurai. You have... 
Dora and his new and his new rival arguing over who did what, and you get Dora Dora ready to throw fists and his rival a falling falling back on lo- logic and arguments. Not probably not so much because. He he possibly thinks that is genuinely the better way, but he also knows that when it comes to a battle of fists, he can't touch Dora. But when it comes to a battle of log- of cool, calm-headed logic and argumentative, he can trash Dora. <laughs> and it's so obvious; it's beautiful. Then you have, of course, the lesser samurai bickering, and then you have their backup from the battle with the Mononoke, who are whinging and whining about how little attention they got in the newspaper article, but then of course these are, of course, heroes, so their takeaway is that they have to strive to be harder. Then you have the, this, oh my goodness, this is this is genuinely funny, and this heart of humor, this realistic relational humor, is what I really think is going to save this manga. You have this glamorous lead character, not the main character, but an important secondary character, leader of his group of heroes, yada yada yada, actually physically intimidating the PR guys because he didn't get enough attention in the paper. It's petty. It's childish. It is completely out of place for any traditional Shonen Jump manga hero. And then, of course, you have this slightly sketchy PR guy managing to manipulate him into going away and it is just it is funny Uh, you have these childish easily manipulated leaders in their field and it is a very interesting dynamic but I am rambling all right then of course you have the plot twist there is a mole in the Asanagi corpse there is at a human or possibly a humanoid Mononoke who's managed to hide themselves, but probably a human given how good the Isnagi corpse has shown to be at detecting supernatural energy. In the Isanagi corpse who is dealing with the one of the creepy hyper-powered Mononoke. And that's the theme it ends on. Our, our petty heroes stuffing their faces, the villain watching the sun go down as he plots what, he, what his next step is going to be. I, as you can tell from my reactions, I genuinely enjoy this manga. I hope, it, I hope we're, it's in it for the long haul. I think if the mangaka can keep up the, as, the really good aspects that make this manga unique, the art is good. It has that really wholesome art style that's kind of the shonen jump classic and it is an excellent example of that style but you've also got again the social dynamic between the samurai themselves it's again very realistic these are not glamorized people they're all individuals watching out for their own interests and that can be played for humor but that can also lead to some really really heartbreaking betrayals and failures later on in the series so this element that's kind of becoming the distinct flavor of Doron Doron can is both great for comedy great for tragedy and also great for heroism when we get to see these very flawed people strive to overcome their flaws so, what do you think? What do you think is the distinct... Let's let's be optimistic here. What do you think is the distinct fi- feature that's going to save Doron Dororon going forward? Leave your, leave, leave your ideas in the comment below the video. Hit that like and subscribe button. And peace out, my wonderful viewers. Humans are weird. We took a vote. And humans are weird. I have the data. Two books in a series of human absurdity. Go check out these short story collections. What will our little green friends think of us when we finally do make it to space? Find out the answer in two books of human absurdity. Humans are weird, we took a vote, and humans are weird, I have the data. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo & Google Play.